Hello and welcome at now at our roundtable, the content and autonomous marketplace for self-driving era. First, I would like to introduce our three panelists, Ms. Mariana sincher Serdic, the head of IoT Technology and Innovation at A1 Slovenia. Mariana has many years of work experience in the field of information and telecommunication technology. Next is Mr. Fede Ponce, the founder and chief innovation officer at Ronin X Design. Ronin X Design is a multidisciplinary, award-winning studio developing UI and UX solution for the world's best OEMs and mobility startups. And last but not the least, Mr. Alex Wolfson, my BMW Mini App Business Manager at BMW Group. Alex is currently focusing on launching the new mobility consumer app connecting touch points from the BMW Group and the My BMW and Mini App. Dear audience, please feel free to post your questions in the chat and let's start. 5G networks are crucial for autonomous driving and vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to X communication. So Mariana, how does A1 plan on building a smart 5G infrastructure? Hi to all the panelists. Uh... I'm glad to be part of this panel. Uh, also, uh, my um, uh, okay. Um, I will just start with with the panel. Um, yeah, uh, within uh, Telecom Austria Group, we have a lot of experience with uh, setting up 5G networks already. Um, we are doing tests uh, within every country uh, we are present uh, currently already. Um, so within uh, Austria, we already uh, acquired the frequency spectrum. Um, and some uh, additional interesting tests are performed with, for example, with Austrian Ravers. We already um, are performing network slicing. And uh, there are, for example, being te uh, tests performed uh, on 5G standalone mo mode already uh, within Belarus and Bulgaria. Uh, coming back to Slovenia, um, we started with the tests uh, already uh, last December uh, on our um, uh, business building in um, co corporate headquarters in Bitice where also uh, Living Rep uh, is uh, uh, lo located. So um, the aim of this uh, test uh, uh, site was to, uh, with a partner agreement with BTC, um, boost cooperation in development in this space, um, to uh, test out the future business models in, with use of 5G technology. Uh, and additionally, currently we are setting two uh, other test sites that are in preparation phase. Uh, one is within Smart City project, with, uh, where the demo environment for multimodal mobility is uh, being uh, tested out with several use cases. And additional uh, interesting one is uh, one with uh, 5G uh, industrial use cases, including measure and measurement and traffic equipment. Um, but uh, one thing is clear now, 5G will be a facilitator for many industries uh, and will enable them to become globally competitive and we are glad to be a small part of this. Also. Great, thank you. Uh, it's lovely. Uh, so Alex, today we cannot imagine smartphone without apps. We, it's millions and millions of apps on, you know, available in stores and soon vehicles will be as well, having apps as well, besides radio, navigation, maps, you know, the closest gas station and similar. So what are, according to your opinion, the driver behind this? 
Well, I think it's, you know, for us at BMW, it's always about customer first. And we want to basically bring them um, the best of breed of everything that we offer in, in our vehicles. Um, we've been in apps for, for a long time. Um, even before we had Apple CarPlay, BMW had been allowing customers to use things like Spotify, uh, you know, directly in the car. Uh, but as we see going forward, there's stuff, there's things that let's sort of say that the ecosystems like uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are going to provide a sort of really sort of the, the great wide diversity and long tail of infotainment that customers want. Uh, and at the same time, there's things that only we can do in, in BMW to really sort of give customers the experience they want. I think, you know, we uh, had the sort of presentation earlier about BMW points and that's where we want to focus on. We don't want to recreate and rebuild things that are out there. We want to basically focus on if there's something, for example, you know, we've done Spotify directly as a, as a native app into our, into our head units. So where we can really make a difference, really create synergies and benefits. We want to be there to have the best experience the customer can have. So they want to have a BMW to explore everything they want to do. And I think there's, there's only going to be more. I mean, I think especially as we, you know, so in the future, as we go into autonomous, um, we're going to see a lot more experiences that the customers are going to want when they have more free time in the car. Yeah, and, and creating a completely new market. Uh, Intel predicts that this passenger economy will be 7 trillion market by 2050. So Fede, thank you for joining us. And, and I don't know whether it's good morning also for you. It, it's, we are already in what, close to 1 a.m.? It's, it's, it's early in the morning. It's uh, 1 a.m., yes. Yeah, but for you, it's really early, early in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once for the audience, Fede is joining us live from Los Angeles, California. And Fede, for you as a passionate artist and human-centric designer, this is a perfect playground. So could you share with us how the leading brands in automotive industry can create award-winning in-car experience Mainly, let's say, based on infotainment. Sure, absolutely. I think um, Alex is right on point. I mean, he mentioned a lot of the things that we're looking at right now. Um, but I think the most important thing for companies is to realize that uh, experience is not just hardware and not just software, right? So when we kind of take a look back at what really makes a great experience, uh, we have to look at human emotions, human needs, and a valuable question for all companies is how do we interpret those human values, those real life interactions and emotions into cohesive digital experiences, right? So the user experience truly begins outside of the vehicle and ends outside of the vehicle. And one of the things that I really liked about uh, BMW's presentation with Alex today was they were showing uh, a really seamless ecosystem between mobile device and as you well mentioned, um, the car as a device itself. So that interconnection. Now, specifically speaking about uh, what I think is the golden chalice of future experiences, uh, we're talking about how to make the technology invisible. So from a software perspective, we wanna be able to, again, as Alex mentioned properly, to create invisible synergies between ecosystems. That's the most important part. For some brands, it will be important to create uh, brand new experiences from scratch. And for other brands, their value will be in those seamless synergies. Uh, in terms of hardware, we have to look at the full range of human inputs and outputs, right? So we have to look at new ways of interpreting uh, haptic feedback, um, natural language and voice assistance, natural ways to understand uh, human gesture, and of course, using audio and scent to drive experiences. We already see a lot of luxury brands introducing this as well. Um, and again, it's all about creating that personalized cocoon. Uh, so, so yeah, I think you know, the biggest the trends that we will see is uh, it will be around synergies, will be around uh, over-the-air customization and heavy personalization from the user and brands that are able to produce those results quickly uh, will be ahead of the curve for sure. Great, great. So Alex, uh, according to your opinion, what will be the first applications for connected and autonomous driving? I think people are going to want to watch, you know, keep binge watching their Netflix, but uh, that would just be me. But I mean, I think that, you know, I, I agree a bit with, with you know, in terms of like the, the world of FETI is that, you know, 
we really need to let the, it's, it's really a customer behavior, customer centric decision. I think from my perspective from BMW, what we need to basically do two things. One is to understand what we can provide and what's important from a BMW perspective, but also to be able to have a platform that's flexible and can allow customers to sort of, again, bring different, you know, different ecosystems, different applications into the car to be able to have the kind of synergies, to have the kind of open APIs that could allow other people to develop uh, inside the BMW platform. So I'd rather not prognosticate on what an application of what uh, applications customers want to use. I think the important thing is that we really sort of focus on the, you know, the capabilities and the ecosystem and the enablers, you know, the haptics, the other types of things to really sort of create the kind of things that support the customer and their needs. Um, I mean, if you look at sort of, let's sort of say, video game industry and other things like, uh, let's sort of say, the Nintendo Switch, uh, the way that they've opened up their ecosystem to do fitness and other types of applications. Um, I don't think that's something that any one company or any one brand can do. I think that we need to sort of think about how do we sort of open, open things up and really allow us to support the customer in whatever they need. So rather than giving you a direct answer, I think the, the question is, let's collaborate, let's work together and let's sort of build the things because we don't know what the customer's going to want to do exactly in a car. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now from the car, let's go to infrastructure. There are also some applications to support connected and autonomous driving, like, you know, smart parking or autonomous, uh, wallet autonomous parking. So Mariana, could you please explain uh, A1 approach or are there any pilots or projects already going on related to parking or smart city offering in general? Um, maybe just first, to switch to connected car again eh? because this yeah. is the basics now um being european part of one of the larger, largest operators worldwide america mobile uh, we will be part of a big ecosystem uh, and we'll be able to provide a single integration point for customers in all our markets soon however we are partners with vodafone already uh, mm -hmm. And we'll provide their internet in the car in several markets soon. Uh, we're already doing it in Austria, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and we especially uh, expect a lot of uh, from, from B2B channel because this is an embedded theme with B2B and B2C channel. Uh, so we can co-create a lot of additional services on it locally. Um, maybe I could also mention that within the group, we also um, started uh, with uh, TV content market. Uh, we have our own sports TV channels and we can uh, use our new TV interface to our customers to, to, to transfer their entertainment to other smart devices and there can also be used within the connected car. Uh, if I just switch to smart cities. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, we are very active uh, also in this space, uh, which what the, makes this um, vertical a little bit different to the others where we can a lot of stuff already copy from the other markets that we are present on. Uh, smart cities need some additional localization, at least in my point of view. Uh, every municipality did different approach because it has different uh, challenges in the end. Um, so um, we tackle this with the uh, ecosystem of very innovative partners, experts in their own solutions, uh, being smart parking or digitalizing some part of the municipality process. Um, and what also sets uh, Slovenia somehow differently from the other countries maybe is a large dispersion of settlements. Uh, and on top of this also, the European problem of uh, aging population. Uh, therefore, I think that private ownership of vehicles will still retain high numbers if we don't offer really flexible vehicle sharing possibilities with on-demand model that can reach beyond the city centers. Uh, also, within this space, sustainability is on our uh, priority list when developing systems. Uh, in utility space, we can offer insight into the last mile of energy grid uh, and data for various mobility scenarios that can improve prediction in energy consumption and similar solutions. Uh, and yeah, like with every of these areas, partnership is key. 
Um, we invest a lot in co-creation of various industries, industries and uh, only in this way we will come to some meaningful solutions that can benefit uh, also ben businesses and of course in the end the end users which are recreating for them. Yeah. And also you managed to set up the private 5G test bed here in Ljubljana at the BTC as well to gain the public acceptance and basically to test, to do it in the real life environment. And this leads, you know, to my next question for Fede. Uh, so Fede, we know that in the past, a lot of innovation happened behind the factory doors, away from public eyes. But now when we go more to services, from products to experiences, uh, also there is a shift of how innovation can be done in a better way we, by introducing the human-centric approach. So how can company prepare their teams for its arrival? Well, all right, that's a, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, so I'll try to keep it very concise, but basically, <laughs> Um, what we're seeing is a shift from, you know, the, the, the vehicle as an object of external appreciation and sort of an object of, of uh, beauty, which it still is, and for all us romantic we love, that love cars, uh, it's a moving sculpture that, you know, shifts with light. But uh, future users are not seeing that. Future users are seeing the interior, right? So what we're seeing is a shift in the design of the interior out. So the interior is becoming much more important than the exterior. And in terms of how do we integrate that to, uh, into a pipeline of uh, pushing prototypes faster, further. So we, companies used to do that through the show car experience, right? And, and that's where they display their prototypes. That's where they display bold ideas, uh, but that's just not enough because at the end of the day, those ideas sort of become uh, just static monuments, static, static pieces of art, which is fantastic, but it doesn't do much. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to change our approach in partnering with real uh, sandbox cities and playgrounds and digital AV living labs like, like yours. And what we do is we actually uh, create um, most valuable proposals or propositions with hardware, with software, and we create uh, you know, a smaller version of what those ecosystems might be and so the show car experience is no longer just sort of this appreciation of this external beautiful thing. It's an actual uh, prototype that users can test in a real living city. And that gives us real time data so that we're able to iterate. And so, uh, you know, it, it, we're entering an era. This is, I think, one of the, the key takeaways I want people to, to see is that we're entering an era of iterative hardware and software development. So it's not just about v1 v2 alpha beta for software uh it's for hardware as well and and, and we need a, a physical place where we can test those iterations yeah and alex we have still time for the last question so bmw is very innovative company you know we were together in, at bmw world and bmw museum and we experienced past and a little bit look into the future so could you also uh, please share with our audience, what can we expect from BMW in the future? I mean, uh, I think uh, I actually was really liking what, what, what uh, sort of, you know, Fede was, was sort of hitting on. Um, and I think that, you know, we want to bring out, you know, new things faster, you know, uh, earlier, faster than we have before. Uh, we do have the issues, for example, about sort of, let's just say, regulations. Um, we can't, I mean, even internally in BMW, there's cars that I can't even drive until I have a special license. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that, you know, we want to, you know, we have a lot of stuff in the pipeline. We want to uh, find ways to, to bring it out and bring out consumers faster. Digital is, is, is certainly one area where, um, again, where we sort of see that we have the ability to sort of, let's sort of say, uh, change the cycle. So if you talk about something like a brand new seven series, it's like it used to be like a seven year end to end development kind of cycle um, with software and other things that we can start bringing things out faster. So things like, um, you know, again, software upgrades, options and services that really sort of allow customers to sort of have a different experience when they return, let's sort of say when they move on to the next car from when they picked it up at the dealer. 
So I think that's one thing to how do we improve, let's sort of say, the small incremental steps to sort of transform what you are buying. Uh, you're not buying a, a sort of static vehicle, but you're buying a platform for, again, things that will come during the life cycle of the car. And I think, we, we, I think if you look at what's been happening since 2016, um, the number of new cars and models and innovations that we, we have in the speed coming out, it's become much more rapid. So I think that on, on both levels, we're trying to sort of transform what does it take to develop and bring out a car um, you know, coming out, especially with electric vehicles and the demand for electric vehicles. That's changing a lot. And blending that with the capability of software to sort of, again, take care, you know, take care, tackle and uh, bring out new innovations in the short term. So I, I think that's basically the kind of the two domains where I sort of think we'll see. And um, 2021 is going to be a big year. I wish I could uh, sort of share more, but uh, I'm just going to have to stay tuned because it's going to be quite amazing. I think we've had some announcements about uh, our electric vehicles coming out next year, but I think once they're really out in the field, we'll start to see a lot of new other additional things coming as well. And Daniel, one, one more point to add to what Alex is saying, because I think this is quite important too, is um, there's a huge revolution in, in terms of data management right now, right? And, and what that allows us to do is create digital twins of cities. And we can run simulations to accelerate uh, learning for autonomous vehicles. We can also uh, drop you know, prototypes without any safety concerns into these digital twins and run simulations of products and services. So the, the, the space between ideation and prototyping is shrinking dramatically because now we have these tools, AR, VR, um, you know, you name it, it's, it's, it's shrinking that gap. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah. I think, Sorry, please, I, Alex. I, I can sort of say that, you know, it used to be for safety tests, you'd have to crash, you know, dozens and dozens <laughs> of cars. Now we can sort of, let's sort of say, build models based on an initial test and basically use, uh, let's say, AI and machine learning to say, hey, we don't have to crash all these extra cars, we can actually simulate these crashes in very high reliability. Yes, yes. So uh, what is great with this panel is that we, it could go hours and hours, you know, <laughs> sharing and exchanging, but uh, I just want to mention to our audience and to both of you, uh, next year, you know, 2021, we will have another Cities Lab Summit and then hopefully in person and we can continue the debate and see Alex how the, the BMW uh, announcement in 2021, we could yes. talk about them. But uh, now we need to conclude this round table. One really, really big thank you for all of you. And, and Fede, for you, good night. And for Maria <laughs> and Alex, good day. And um, we will continue with our program. And once again, thank you for being on this round table. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel.